Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Today is Wednesday, August 8th, 2018. Let me repeat that because it's important because lines change over time. Today is August the 8th, 2018. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. The reason for this video is there's a line being offered by a casino right now that is so compelling that I think we all need to know about it. Quite frankly, I believe you want to consider jumping on this one. The Golovkin Canelo fight. Folks, could the stakes be higher career wise for both fighters? You have two of the hardest punchers in the sport. They now know each other. They've been in the ring for 12 rounds. There are no more feeling out rounds, right? Both guys have seen the other guy. Both guys have tasted the power. They've checked out the hand speed, right? They know what to expect. They're not going to come in the ring and look at each other and introduce themselves for six or nine minutes. No, you're going to jump into this fight in the 13th round, right? The first one went 12. Now, one guy has been publicly shamed, publicly embarrassed in a way that casts doubt on his entire career because of tainted meat, right? Now people are openly saying, well, how much tainted meat did this guy eat in the past? You have people holding up photos and they're saying, wow, you know, how could this guy lose this much body weight, right? They're even looking at films of the first fight. And they're saying, wow, how could this guy have this much stamina in the 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds to make a comeback in the fight? Well, to make matters worse, just think about it. You've been publicly shamed. You failed not one, but two drug tests. The Boxing Commission looking at a big payday. Right? A lot of jobs being created, a lot of commerce, a lot of excitement around a big rematch. Said player, not so fast. You're suspended. We have rules. These drug tests matter. Right? We don't want to hear about tainted meat. You're an adult. You're responsible for what you put in your body. Right? So it gets worse. His opponent, simply put, if you look at the numbers, if you look at the string of knockouts he had in title fights, if you look at his unbeaten record, if you look at the length of time that he's been middleweight champion, you realize he's one of the best middleweights in history. Right? And of course, he didn't run to the other guy's defense. There was no, you know what, it's hard to tell if meat's tainted. Or, you know, I have faith that any violation was unintentional. There was nothing like that. You got the opposite. You got the middleweight champion saying, you know what, I sparred with this guy. And when he showed up at my gym, there were needle marks on his body. Right? What he was telling you was, look, this guy is a fraud. His performances have been artificially enhanced by tainted meat and worse. Right? This guy's part of a regiment that has him with needle marks. Right? This guy's not real. He went the distance with me because he's cutting corners. So as you can imagine, folks, this is a bad blood fight, 
right? There's a difference between guys having playful trash talk and guys who actually don't like each other. These guys don't like each other. Both guys think they won the first fight. They don't like each other. Now, let me just say here that I favor Golovkin in the fight. I believe Golovkin is going to win the fight. I believe Golovkin wins the fight convincingly. But you know what? For purposes of this video, that doesn't matter. Right? What matters here? Incredibly. It's a line that is an eye-opener for me. Incredibly some casinos, at least one online casino that I'm looking at right now, for legal reasons, I'm not going to give the name, right? You check your casino. But I'm right now looking at a website where they have the over under at 11 and a half rounds. Folks, you can't get higher than that. They don't give you 12 round over unders. You have a high over-under in a fight between two of the entire sport's hardest punchers. And believe it or not, the under 11 and a half rounds is going off at not even money, but a plus 175. Bet 100, you win you get a plus 175 back, folks. You get your 100, right? They say, hey, here's the money you bet. Then the guy turns back around, reels off another $175 and gives it to you. Right, folks? If there's a stoppage, as long as it's not in the last 90 seconds of the fight, as long as it's not the kind of knockdown you just had in Joseph Parker against Dylan White. Dylan White gets up, makes it to the finish line, wins the fight. As long as it's not a late knockdown like that, you win. Folks, you win handsomely. Plus 175? What do folks think is going to happen in this fight? Folks, both of these guys are coming for a knockout. Right? I know the first fight went the distance. I got to tell you, the most stunned man in America was me. I was, I was looking at the end of that first. I said, what? This fight? This fight went the distance? Right? Canelo, I thought, was dead in the water in the eighth round. He gets a second win. Right? That fight goes the distance. You know, neither guy's happy about that. Understand, both guys are talking about stoppage. Do you think for a second that Golovkin is thinking to himself, let me get a decision here. Let me outbox Canelo over 12 rounds and get a decision. That's not his thought process, folks. Right, Vanis Martirosian lasted less than two rounds. Gets stopped in the second. That's the interim fight Golovkin had. Right? That's the interim fight. Right? As for Canelo, folks, I'm sure after the first fight, people came up to him and said, Hey, man, you're on your back foot a bit too much, weren't you, player? Why were you, maybe they didn't use the R word, running in the fight. But... This is polite society. They were probably more polite than that. They probably said, hey, you know, you, you were trying to trap him, right? You were you were backing up. This was a one man well Marcus type game, right? You saw something on film and you thought you could catch him coming in, right? Bottom line is this. There is no way anyone watched the first fight, the middle portion, and didn't think to themselves, man, I've never seen Canelo on his back foot more. Right? I'm surprised Nike and Puma didn't call him after the fight and say, hey, player, we'd like for you to endorse our track shoes. Right? Canelo's on his back foot, folks. He is moving away from Golovkin. 
Now, you're telling me you're one of the hardest punchers in the sport of boxing. You've been busted for tainted meat, right? Failed two drug tests, two. You're telling me that in the rematch, you're not going to stand there in the pocket, right? Sit high in the saddle and try to prove to the world that, look, I'm the better man. In fact, I'm taking this out of the judge's hands. I'm telling you, Canelo is not going to wait until the 10th round this time to get the party started. I'm telling you, Canelo is not thinking about getting a decision here, right? The worst thing that could happen to Canelo, I'm sure for him, apart from losing, would be to get some photo finish decision that's debated, that has people saying, hey, come on, this is ridiculous. Canelo should have been suspended for two years, as so many fighters have been, for PED bus, right? Here he is getting a rematch within six months, right? Basically a non-penalty in boxing. And now he's getting a gift decision, right? Handing Golovkin a very undeserved political first loss of his career, right? You don't want gifts, from judges in boxing when half the public already believes that you've gotten favorable treatment. When a sizable portion of the public is openly asking the question of how many fights in your past were impacted by tainted meat. Right? So no, I believe Canelo in his heart believes that he is the best in boxing. I'm convinced the people around Canelo are savvy, right? His promoter is Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar knows the game in and out, right? Oscar didn't want Canelo fighting Lara. There is no way after the first fight, Canelo's inner circle said, you know what? You need to fight this guy again. Keep in mind, Golovkin has one draw on his record. It's to Saul Alvarez. Officially, Alvarez did not lose that first fight. If you're the guy who gets a draw against a very praised future Hall of Famer big puncher like Golovkin, Right? In a fight where, let's face it, Golovkin never goes down. Golovkin's the aggressor. He's coming after Canelo. Right? I'm guessing there are people on the Canelo team who are privately thinking to themselves, thank goodness we got that draw. Right? That's like getting a draw against Joshua or Wilder. Where people look at the record and they say, oh wow, Deontay Wilder's unbeaten. And they say, well, wait a moment. What's up with that draw? Who was that draw against? And they say Saul Alvarez, and you say, oh, man, you know, the draw's a feather in Canelo's cap. Now, in my opinion, Canelo, who firmly believes he's the best, in my opinion, and I congratulate him for that, I give him an A-plus on courage, right? Apart from the fact that he made Golovkin wait a year before this fight took place, the first fight, Right? But the bottom line is, I believe it's Canelo after the first fight who thought to himself, you know what, I'm the best. I'm the best. I don't like this draw. Right? It's Canelo who's thinking to himself, you know what, if I just tweak this and tweak that, there's no way this guy beats me. So I'm just telling you, in this fight, don't expect Canelo to be on his horse like he was in the middle of the first fight, right? I just feel both guys are going to draw a line in the sand. 
right? If the first round happens and suddenly I see Golovkin dancing and on his back foot and trying to look like Ali or something, okay, okay, I'll be the most shocked man in America a second time, right? I don't expect that to happen. I think Golovkin comes in, he's on his front foot. I think Canelo comes in, Canelo, a bit more of a boxer than Golovkin, but I believe Canelo in his mind is thinking, look, if I just set up this left hook a certain way, look, if I just lull this guy into forgetting about my straight right, like I did Amir Khan, and I just drop that punch, this guy's toast. Or if I go to the body, like I did against Liam Smith, this guy won't be able to withstand it. What I don't see Canelo doing is having a plan where he's going to avoid the pocket. He's going to be on his back foot. He's going to win the fight going away on points. That's not who he is, folks. So here the casino is telling you it doesn't matter who you take. You take Canelo, you take Golovkin, if the fight ends before the midway point of the 12th round. Think about that. 11 full rounds and then half of the 12th. They're telling you if the fight ends before 90 seconds are left in the fight, we're going to pay you a plus 175. Let me just get ready to get out of my seat so I can grab this. Actually, I've already grabbed it. Folks, I like the under 11 and a half rounds at a plus 175. This is like Joshua Wilder. Then they tell you a plus 11 and a half rounds. And you're thinking to yourself, wow, don't both guys usually win by KO? Is there a guy in this fight who wants to win the fight on his back foot? Wrap it up. I'll take it. Let me say this, if I'm watching the fight and Canelo wins by knockout in the first 11 and a half rounds, I'll be surprised. I'll be shocked. But I'll also be collecting. Right? Because the under will have hit. If you're going to hedge the play, I still say the winner, in my opinion, is going to be Golovkin. So I would hedge the play with Golovkin simply to win. Right? Hedged with the under 11 and a half rounds. Understand, you're in the penthouse. If Golovkin closes the fight early, you win both halves of the bet. Does it get better than that? Golovkin wins by knockout. You turn to your friend, you say, hey, I told you. Then you go collect. Then the person says, okay, Golovkin won. Here's your money. Oh, and you hit on the under. Here's a plus 175. Right? At, at that point, you're just thinking to yourself, okay, today was good. You know, give it a look. It's shocking. Let me know in the comment section. Let all of us know in the comment section what your favorite casino is offering as the over-under. Right? I'm just telling you that I'm looking at a very well-known sports book that's online here. Right? I'm not going to give the name simply because of legal reasons in the United States. Right? We're legalizing sports betting, but it's a gray area right now. But just know there are books out there. Right? There are books out there that are giving you far greater than even money for an under 11 and a half rounds in a fight involving Golovkin. That by itself, you don't even need to worry about the Canelo part. That by itself is astonishing. Only two guys have gone the distance against Golovkin in recent memory. Right? Danny Jacobs, one of the best at middleweight. Right? And Saul Alvarez. In a fight where, let's face it, at the end of that fight, you were shocked that fight went the distance, right? Canelo's on his horse in the middle of the fight. Golovkin, and I'm sure Golovkin thinks about this every day in camp. Golovkin 
takes his foot off the gas a little bit. Very late in that fight. I'm sure he was astonished when the scores came back and they called it a draw. He's not going to let that happen again. I like the under 11 and a half rounds at a plus 175. You heard me right. That's crazy, folks. Let me know what you think. I like the under 11 and a half. I'll throw some money also on Golovkin simply to win. So, you know, if what I think happens in the fight, I'm on the winning side. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Understand the risk involved. Canelo wins a decision. You lose it all. Or Canelo, or, you know, Canelo wins by KO in the last 90 seconds of the fight. You lose it all. I'm willing to take that risk. Thanks for stopping by.